Alhamdulillah, it's a blessed day, it's a blessed month when we can gather and speak of the Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll keep it short, inshallah ta'ala. A few things I want to mention is that the um, title of his mother is Triumph and Tribulation. And Shaykh Faraz has mentioned already the life of the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is fraught with tribulations. And he's a great teacher. He, was, he said, I was only sent as a teacher, teaching us how to deal with these problems. And um, one of the, uh, the, the culmination of, of uh, uh, tribulations was his hijrah uh, to Medina to Manawara. And when he entered into the city of Medina, the Prophet them, he was expected uh, by the, the Ansar as well as the Jews in the city, Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu anhu, who at the time was had some training as a rabbi, ethnically Jewish, later became Muslim. He said, yeah, He said, I can tell, and, and Arafah means to recognize, right? To recognition. I can I recognize that his face was not the face uh, of a liar. Uh, and then the Prophet sallallahu he made his initial statement, Ya ayyuhan nas, afshu salama, wa ati'imu ta'ama, wa silu al-arhama, wa sadu bil-layl, wa nasu niyam, tadkhul al-jannata fi salam. And that was recorded by Abdullah ibn Salam. And so, here the Prophet sallallahu is moving out of his what some of the ulama refer to as a Christic phase or an Isawi phase. In other words, the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca resembled the Isa alayhi salam. He was assertively non-violent. He did not uh, retaliate for any personal injury towards him. And this, and this was also in the Medani period as well, when he entered into his mosaic or Musawi phase. In Mecca, the Mushrikeen, they would... Um, lampoon him, they make fun of him, they, they call him the opposite of Muhammad. And the Prophet wasallam. the way he dealt with that is, as one of my teachers said, he did not give it any reality. He just said, who, who is that? I'm Muhammad. What are they saying? They're saying something else. That's not me. What are these fools talking about? Right? And there were people in Medina to Munawwara uh, that there were mushrikeen in Medina. They later became munafiqeen after the Battle of Badr. But when the Prophet ﷺ was coming into Medina, some of the mushrikeen paid their best poet, Hassan ibn Thabit. And they said to him, when you see him, pick some feature that he has and make fun of him, lampoon him, ridicule him, and let us recite this poetry for as long as, as, long as he's here. Let's make fun of him. Right? So Hassan ibn Thabit, he climbs a small hill and he sees the Prophet ﷺ going by. And according to the story, he looks at the Prophet ﷺ, his one glance at the Prophet ﷺ, one glance at the spectacle of creation that is passing by him. And he goes back to the mushrikeen because they paid him some money. He said, I don't need your money anymore. Here you go. I don't need it. He said, let's hear what you wrote. And he said, Lamma ra'aytu anwarahu sata'at. He said, when I saw his lights approaching, wada'atu min khifati kaffi ala basari. He says, I had to cover my eyesight with my hand because of the, the blinding lights. Khawfan ala basari min husni surati. Out of fear of losing my eyesight due to the beauty of his countenance, so that's to anzuruhu illa ala qadri. I could barely, I could scarcely look at him. Ruhum mina nuri fi jismi min al qamari. A soul from light, a body that looks like the moon, the full moon. Kahiliyatin nusijat min al anjum al zuhri. Like a mantle stitched together with brilliant stars. Muhammadun basharun wa laysa kal bashari. He is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. Wa huwa yaqudatun wa nasu kal hajari. That uh, he's uh, other people are like stones, but he's he's like a precious jewel. 
So he's still from the genus of stone, as it were, it is a fair, or human being. He's a very special human being. And then the Prophet sallam, in Medina, and he was a peacemaker. Okay. Here's the thing is that the Quran is our primary text. And it's very hard for the shayateen to attack the Quran because the message of the Quran is very clear. They go to hadith, they go to weak hadith, they go to uh, solitary transmission, they go to sira literature. Okay, the, the, the mass transmitted normative agreed upon ethos of the Prophet وسلم, is taken primarily from the Quran. And if there are solitary transmissions that run counter to that, okay, then we take the Quran and we take the mass transmitted sunnah over solitary transmissions. So what does the Quran say about the Prophet Sallallahu It says that he was a peacemaker. And this, this ayah of the Quran is ajib, and I quote it a lot in many, many different contexts. Hold fast to the rope of Allah and don't be divided amongst yourselves. Don't be divided. In Habulullah, according to the sound hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Habulullah is Kitab Allah al Mateen, the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Wad puru ni'mat Allah alaykum if kuntum a'da'an. And remember the blessing of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. You were enemies. Humanity. In the first instance, the Aus and the Khazraj, who would become the Ansar, Imam Fakhruddin al Razi, he says they were fighting blood feuds for 120 years. And he says, Ila an Islam. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extinguished that with Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made ta'leef, He brought your hearts together. United your hearts by means of his ni'mah. Imam al-Baydawi, he says, Allafa baynahum bi rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sallam. The ni'mah, the great ni'mah through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala united the hearts was through his habib sallallahu alayhi wa la alihi wa sallam. And you were on the brink of the fire and he saved you from it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina to Manawara, in the hadith literature, hadith that's in the Mustadrak of Imam al-Hakim, Imam al-Bayhaqi also records the hadith. He performed his own aqiqah in Medina. And Imam Suyuti says in his fatwa, and his fatawa, that this was to celebrate his motive. The Prophet sallallahu celebrated his motive. This is the opinion of Jalal al-Din suyuti who was a great, great scholar. Right? In the Sahihain, why are you fasting? We know the hadith. That that This is the day in which I was born, and the day in which the Quran was revealed to me. In the Sunan of Imam Al Nasai, a sound hadith from uh, Abu Sa'id Al Khudri. He says that Muawiyah radiAllahu anhu. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one time came and he saw his Sahaba in a halqa sitting in a halqa, and he said, ma, ma ajlasa, ma ajlasa, uh, ma ajlasakum. Why are you sitting in the circle? What has brought you out here? Why are you sitting in this majlis? And they responded to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said, Nad'u'llaha, huh? Nad'u'llaha, wa, he said, we're calling on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, wa nahmaduhu ala ma hadana lil Islam, he said, uh, they said to him, uh, to, uh, we are calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is what we're doing here, and we're, uh, we're uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guiding us to Islam, okay, and, for, and the blessing of you, and the blessing of you, Ya Rasulullah. Right? So what are the Sahaba doing? What we're doing? That's exactly what we're doing. Right? And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, I'm not asking you to rebuke you. Read the entire hadith. He said, I'm asking you because I was informed that inna Allah ta'ala 
yubahi bikum al malaika that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting to the angels about you right now because of what you're doing. So what were the Sahaba doing? They were sitting around, they were supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huh? and they were recounting the blessing of, of, of Allah sending them the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So celebration of Mawlid is indispensable. Every Muslim has to celebrate the Mawlid. In other words, every Muslim has to be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you're not happy that Allah sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then there's something wrong with your aqidah. That's an aqidah issue. On the day in which you do that, that's a fiqh issue. That's not an aqidah issue. You do it one day, today, in the masjid, somewhere else, that's, that's not an aqidah issue. But, but expressing joy for the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is something that is indispensable. This is, this is the hallmark of a Muslim. The Christians say, La ilaha illallah. I've heard them say, Arab Christians. Jews, they say that too. What makes the difference? They say, what, what makes the difference for us? Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. He's the messenger of God, the final messenger of God. Okay? And in the names of the Prophet ﷺ, there are, there are indeed secrets. Like with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of my teachers mentioned something interesting. He said, if you look at the name Allah, Allah, right? That's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take off the first letter, the alif, you have lillahi, which means for God. Walillahi mashriqu wal maghrib. And if you take off the lamb here, lahu, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al And if you take off the lamb here, you have hu, Allahu la ilaha illa hu. All of these have meaning, right? And then he said, he, he, he said, if you take the name Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what does Muhammad mean, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It means the most praised, the one who is repetitively praised, the one who is intensively praised, right? When you take off the meme, you have hamd, you have praise, or hamid, because sometimes the dagger alif is not written in shorthand Arabic. When you take off the ha, you have Mad or madad, madad spiritual nourishment that we gain our spiritual nourishment through salah al nabi, through ittiba of the Prophet sallallahu adhering to the sunnah, and then you take off uh, um, the next letter and you have the ha, you have dal, you take the meme and you have dal, dal. What does that? Dal la yudulu means it is, is signification. An indication, right? It's like the ulama say, al mawjudu fil mushaf dalla ala kitab illahi al nafsi wal qadim. What we have mawjud in the mushaf, right? The sort of uh, modality of the Quran indicates upon the pre eternal, the pre eternal personal speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we have with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an indication of the, of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in, a, in a perfect Adamic creature, indications of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran to the believers, He is kind and merciful. These are two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of course, it's not the same. Obviously, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but He's the best of creation. Okay, and this is what it means to be the perfect human being. It is, it is to be the perfect, if you will, theomorphic manifestation of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The perfect human being. To be lordly in that sense, right? Not that, like what the Christians did, they took prophets and angels to be arbaba min dunillah, divine lords other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walakin kunu rabbaniyin. Rather be lordly. Be reflections, reflections of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, give us um, tawfiq and to give us his forgiveness and to make this a means by which we approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Shaykh Farah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is the light of the heavens and the earth. Imam Suyuti says the meaning of that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all light in the heavens and the earth. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Mufassir al-Qur'an, the one upon whom the Prophet sallallahu placed his blessed hand and said, Allahumma allimhu at ta'wil O oh Allah, give him deep substantive knowledge of the Qur'an, deep knowledge of the exegesis of the Qur'an. He said the meaning of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guide of all creatures in the heavens and the earth. And then, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِسْبَاحِ there's an incredible, I mean, the Qur'an is an ocean of meaning. And everything you'll find in the Qur'an, like one of my teachers said that, he said, uh, he said um, there was a, uh, an Orientalist who attended a, 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 a dars, and, um, and the, 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 the sheikh, he said, he said, everything is in the Qur'an. Everything you need to know is in the Qur'an. And the Orientalist said, do you really believe that? And he said, naam. He said, yes, of course. In the Orientals, he said, okay, if, if you have a sack of wheat, how many loaves of bread can you make from it? Is that in the Quran? And the Shaykh said, yes. Is it is? Yes. Where is it? And the baker was in the class. He said, baker, how many loaves of bread can I make with one sack of wheat? He said, about 15 to 20. So there you go. Everything you need to know is in the Quran. Not necessarily everything in its minute details, but the methodology is there. Right? So in this ayah, ayatul nur, so there's, there's incredible meanings in the Quran. You know, Imam Jafar al Sadiq, he said that the Quran has four levels of meaning the expression, the illusions, the subtleties, the realities. And these are known by like the awam, and then you have the ulama, then you have you know, the anbiya, then you have meanings, meanings of the Quran, significations, ma'ani of the Quran that are only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's something that Abdullah ibn Abbas, he mentions. Now we have the similitude, the parable of his light, a light that Allah owns. Ibn Abbas says, it is mentioned that this is a reference to the light of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the entire parable is a eulogy, a eulogy, a praising of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we need to engage in the Kitab Allah. We need to engage uh, in, uh, in the, the Sunnah, the mass transmitted Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? Um, and knowledge is something that, I mean, if you keep, we're running out of time, but if you get down to the uh, end of the ayah to Nur, Nurun ala Nur, Fakhradin al-Razi and others, they say what that means is naqal in aqal. Right? The, the aqal, the intellect, the conscience, the word conscience is a Latin word, conscience, with knowledge, your fitrah, that you're born with certain truths that you know that are innate, that are natural. When that interacts with the naqal, the wahi, right? this produces illumination of the heart, just as uh, oil, which is the zayt, which is internal to the lamp, the misbah, and nar of a fire, which is external to it, when they interact, it illuminates the lamp. Naqal and aqal. This is our methodology. This is how we engage with the world. Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our, our deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our, our, our misdeeds and, and raise our ranks and give us Jannah and give us the, the uh, companionship of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 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 wa sallam